Hey guys, I'm going to introduce a great free tool called the Johns Hopkins Trust Simulator. This tool allows you to design a truss, apply a virtual load, and then see how the forces get spread out throughout the design. This video is part one in a series of videos about this truss simulator. It covers how to use the basic parts of the program. Further videos will cover navigating additional settings and give tips, tricks, and examples for designing model bridges. This new version, created by Claire Verholst, replaces the now obsolete version, also once hosted on the Johns Hopkins website. This one is more powerful and flexible, which in turn makes it a bit more complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it is not hard to use at all. There's a link in the description to this program, but you can also search Trust Simulator and easily find it. There are a handful of other similar free tools out there, but this is the one I have found to be the easiest to use and it's definitely my go-to. Let's jump right in. There are three sections to this interface. The top section has buttons to help you design your truss. The middle section is your canvas or work area. It is divided into four quadrants and further divided into a custom grid. The bottom section allows some control of the work area layout as well as the ability to show or hide different types of information. Starting with the top section, take a look at the four example trusses by clicking on the first set of buttons. This gives you a basic idea of the types of designs you can make. The next set of buttons are labeled Add Node, Member, and Force. Nodes are joints. Members are individual pieces that connect joints together, and forces are just what they sound like and are added to joints. These are the main buttons you use in creating your truss design. Quick side note, if at any time you want to start over and clear the canvas, simply reload the page and it will erase everything. You start by adding the nodes or joints to the canvas. Click on the Add Node button and then click anywhere on the intersecting grid lines to place a node. Notice that as you move your mouse around the grid, the X and Y coordinates are shown right here. This helps you place the nodes very precisely. Also notice that as you add nodes, a chart is created below the work area and the nodes are numbered sequentially in order of creation, starting with node zero. There are two ways to move nodes around. The first way is to click on the move node button and then click the node you want to move and then move your mouse to a new spot and click a third time to place the node. The other way is to manually type in new X and Y coordinates for that node into the chart below the canvas. To delete a node, use the delete single button. This button works for nodes, members, and forces. Click the button and then click on whatever you want to delete. Before you begin, it is a good idea to know the basic design that you want, as well as the dimensions and placement of each node. Later, I'll show you how to change the scale and layout of the canvas to match what you'll be designing. You will usually want to do this before you begin designing on the canvas. Once all your nodes are created, you connect them with members. Click on the Add Member button, and then click on any node, and then click on the other node you want connected to it. If you are connecting a straight line of multiple nodes, you can simply click on the first and last node in the line and it will add all the appropriate members for you. In order for the program to calculate the forces in your design, you have to design a certain type of truss with a balanced number of nodes and members. The number of members must be exactly two times the number of nodes minus three. So if you have 10 nodes in your design, you must have 17 members. 17 equals 2 times 10, which is 20, minus 3. This is the mathematical way to say that you have a stable truss. This is just something you have to keep in mind, and you will actually get an error message if you don't design a truss like this. But don't worry, because designing a truss like this is very easy to do and pretty soon you will understand how to visually see if a truss is stable or not. Adding forces is easy. Click the Add Force button and then click on the node you are adding the force to. 
and then move your mouse around to change the direction and magnitude of the force, clicking again to set it in place. Just like the nodes, you can manually change forces in the chart below the canvas. You can modify the X and Y components of the force, which effectively change the direction and magnitude. Before you can solve for the forces in your truss, you must set the support nodes, both a pinned node and either a horizontal or vertical rolling node. The definitions of these will be explained in another video, but for now, just know you have to do this for the program to work. Click on the respective support buttons, pinned and rolling, and then on the two nodes of your choice. With a typical truss, you will want to set these as the first and last node on the bottom cord. And finally, you are ready for the fun part. You can solve for the forces. Click on the Solve Once button, and voila, you have the forces displayed on the canvas and in the chart below. But don't stop there. This new version of the Trust Simulator adds an amazing feature that allows you to solve for the forces on the fly as you move things around. Click on the Solve During Move button and then click on any node and move it around. The numbers will adjust in real time. Click a second time to set that node in place. And that about wraps it up for this video. There's a lot more to using the program specifically for model bridges as well as learning how to use the bottom section of the page so be sure to check out the next videos as they're released. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions or tips of your own for using the program. As always, you can share your model bridge creations on our Facebook page, linked in the description.